suivi parce que j'avais envie de rester avec vous. Vous êtes très gentil, mais je ne peux pas. Je croyais que vous ne faisiez rien. Non, je ne fais rien, mais je vous ai dit, j'ai une vie bien remplie. Et vous me me. Am I that dangerous? You are Irma Vep for me. So yes, you are dangerous. A French classic rises again in a restored version. Irma Vep gets the small screen treatment and the spectre of a legendary beast returns in an action horror flick. That's all coming up in today's film show. And for that, I'm joined by critic Lisa Nesselson. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Olivia. We're starting with a film that's being re-released here in France after a first showing at the Cannes Film Festival. It's called The Mother and the Whore, for a catchy title. It's three hours and 40 minutes long, so it's quite the running time and I know that this film is incredibly important to you Lisa tell us why uh, this is one of my favorite movies of all time it was first shown in Cannes in 1973 and caused a scandal back when film festival scandals were about artistic ambitions and not about wardrobe malfunctions or alleged sexual misconduct I first saw it in Chicago when I was 17 years old and I think it's safe to say that it changed my life back then they couldn't put the word whore on a movie marquee and so I went to see something that was called The Mother and the W followed by four asterisks people have never stopped talking about this film because for the past few decades due to rights problems that have now been ironed out. It has been very difficult to see, and even then, usually on beat-up VHS cassettes, the quality of the restored sound and the image literally brought tears to my eyes. So Jean-Pierre Léo plays Alexandre, who spends most of his time in Paris cafes making often hilariously self-centered pronouncements about the nature of life. He is a kept man. He lives with Marie, who is played by Bernadette Lafont, who owns a clothing boutique and puts up with his outrageous behavior because because, well, she loves him. That behavior includes getting involved with Veronica, played by national treasure Françoise Lebrun. Veronica lives in a garret room in the hospital where she is a nurse, and she's very, very forthright about how sometimes she just wants to have sex, much the way uh, we've been conditioned to believe only men do. The language still sounds incredibly frank 49 years later. Well, it all sounds extremely French. Let's take a look <laughs> at The Mother and the Whore and hear from actress Françoise Lebrun about pushing the envelope when it came to making this film. Chaque matin, chaque jour que nous ne passons pas ensemble, c'est un jour que nous perdons. C'est un massacre, c'est un crime. J'ai envie de rebaiser avec vous. Pourquoi les femmes n'auraient-elles pas le droit de dire qu'elles ont envie de baiser avec un type Écoutez, mon vieux, je dois vous dire que vos amours commencent à m'emmerder. Je suis affreuse. Mais vous avez une façon d'être affreuse qui vous va très bien. Foutez-moi le camp Oust Je liquide Mon cœur est une fleur d'automne sans ça. Comme vous êtes pauvre, comme vous êtes con, comme je vous déteste. I think we were very, very happy to create something so radical and different. It was a time when French society was just becoming less conservative, so to be honest, we were super proud. OK, so this is almost four hours of people talking, more or less. Is that not a lot to sit through? Uh, you know, when people posit that a running time for a motion picture sounds like it's too long, I have a tendency to say now, tell me you have not binge-watched hours after hours after hours of TV true, series. True, you know? true. The writer-director, Jean Eustache, drew heavily on his own life to write dialogue that sounds like it's improvised, but was actually penned down to the last comma. This was shot in black and white in 16 millimeter in the streets of Paris in 1972, and it's a time capsule about French society when people were faced with the reality that May 68 and the sexual revolution maybe weren't going to fulfill all of their promises. If you're interested in human behavior and in the Paris of long talks and long walks that we pretty much all carry in our heads, set aside four hours of your life to see this. It's a okay. masterpiece. Okay, I will do, indeed. Next to another extremely French project, but one that has global reach, director Olivier Assayas has revisited his own 1996 cult film, Irma Vep, in the form of an eight-episode TV series with the same name. 
now. It stars Alicia Vikander as an American actress who comes to Paris to play a female criminal mastermind from the silent era. This is on HBO in the US. It's on OCS here in France and other platforms worldwide. Tell us more about the series. Well, I saw the first three episodes of this projected on the big screen just a few weeks ago in Cannes. OCS admitted that uh, he's still editing the final installments and he urged us to think of this project not as a TV series, but as a film that happens to last eight hours. The three hours I saw pretty much flew by. This is catty cross-cultural fun, a movie about making movies mostly in English with a smattering of French. And this is very, very, very meta and lots of genuine film history is embedded in the story thus far. But it's easy to watch even if you could not care less about uh, silent film serials or the director's private life. So in 1915-1916, Louis Fuyad created an incredibly successful series of silent cliffhangers for the cinema about a gang of French criminals calling themselves Les Vampires. Rearrange the letters of vampire, vampire, and it spells Irma Vett. Uh -huh. The surrealists could not get enough of these films about unrepentant jewel thieves. French actress Musidora, who played Irma Vett, was very talented, inventing, among other things, the skin-tight cat suit in which she tiptoes across Paris rooftops up to no good. Uh, and in the 1996 film, I told you it was meta, Hong Kong star Maggie Chung, who was married to Asayas, the director for several years, plays Irma Vep. In this series, Alicia Vikander is a very popular movie star who follows a European promotional tour for a Hollywood super production with a commitment to stay in Paris to star in a revisiting of Irma Vep by a famously neurotic but brilliant French director. Okay, I'm getting shades of Catwoman here. Let's take a look at some of the action in Irma Vep. This is not my world. Paris, Rene, Irma Vett. Vous pensez que je dois faire ce film? Euh, euh, puis je vous rappelle qu'il s'agit d'une série. Euh, non. C'est un film, certes, un peu long, euh, qui est divisé en huit. Si vous le dites. Oh bon, descendez-moi, merde! Cambre-toi et suffoque. Well, it certainly looks very stylish, but this is a storyline, as you say, from about 100 years ago. How easy is it to update? Well, for starters, there are three major lesbian characters, uh, two of them quite glamorous, and at least one flamboyantly entertaining, very gay man. My view of film history is that there have always been queer individuals in front of and behind the camera, always, always, always. This is sexy and funny, if sometimes a bit didactic, and the seemingly ubiquitous Vincent McCanya, who we just saw there, is especially entertaining as a stand-in for Asayas himself. And because it all connects, none other than Jean-Pierre Léo <laughs> played the director role back in 1996. Okay, Vincent Macchiagna and Jean-Pierre Léo, I think, can see the link there. <laughs> now we're going to a film injecting a dose of spooky 18th century legend into our 21st century lives. The Brotherhood of the Wolf has been restored and the 2001 French hit is back on screens now. It is. When I saw this 21 years ago, I enjoyed it thoroughly, but I had no idea that it was inspired by an authentic legend, one that French kids are very familiar with because apparently parents would threaten them that if you don't do this or that, the Beast of Gévaudan will get you, sort of like <laughs> the boogeyman. So I didn't know that martial arts were very popular in 18th century France either, probably because they wouldn't, weren't, but that's part of the fun in this highly stylized historical horror film. So a knight who serves as chief naturalist to King Louis XV and uh, an Indian companion are trying to get to the bottom of brutal and mysterious killings in the Gévaudan region. Okay, sounds quite spooky. Let's take a look at the Brotherhood of the Wolf. Cette fois, nous l'aurons. Parlerons plus jamais du Gévaudan, n'est-ce pas? Ah 
podcast is full of actors who have prominent careers today. Luckily, uh, there's a brothel with an Italian uh, woman there, so Monica Bellucci could play her. <laughs> and uh, the story is told by the Gloria Jacques Perrin, who died very recently. He finishes his account, told in flashback, as the French Revolution really ramps up. The moral being that legendary beasts may be bloodthirsty, but so are the great unwashed when riled up against the nearest aristocrats. The film is surprisingly pertinent on how populations can be influenced or controlled by fear of violent intruders, and how elites are loath to willingly relinquish power. And shades of the worst political impulses in, say, the U.S. or Russia, uh, the perpetrators believe they are on a mission to restore God to France. Fun fact, it is the sixth highest grossing French language film of all time in wow. the United States, and you may have seen some of writer-director Christophe Gann's uh, subsequent work if you like movies based on video games. Well, I can't say that would be me, but now to a <laughs> film that could actually be a video game and probably is and I'm not aware of it. I'm looking forward to this. It's the latest uh, installment, the return of those pesky dinosaurs in Jurassic World Dominion. They've left the park and gone planetary. Now we've got actors Jeff Goldblum, Laura Dern and Sam Neill back from the original Jurassic Park. And if we're going just on the poster and the trailer, we get the idea that the right kind of motorcycle can outrun a dinosaur. <laughs> you see these critters? <clears throat> um... I am not unwrapping them, and that's because movies have taught us that it is a very bad idea to bring a giant ape to Manhattan nightclubs to entertain people, mm. and it is an equally bad idea to revive dinosaur DNA. But, of course, it's probably a good idea if you want to get people into movie theaters. Um, there's an experiential exhibit right here in Paris uh, at the Parc des Expositions in the south of town through August 28th called The Time of the Dinosaurs with 50 life-size replicas. Wow. And it, if it makes you want to buy a dinosaur of your very own, uh, a skeleton anyway, uh, you'll need deep pockets. I gaped at 66 million year old Big John, a remarkably intact Triceratops skeleton on display in a window in the Marais just last year before being sold at Sotheby's for 6.6 .6 million euros in October. The paleontologist who dug it up in South Dakota put it up for sale on his website for a mere $200,000 in 2014. I think we can say that a movie ticket costs substantially less than that. Yes, a fraction of the price to see real dinosaurs, no less. Lisa, thank you so much for this week's roundup. We'll leave you with the financially accessible dinosaurs of Jurassic World Dominion. Do remember you can get more movie news on our website. We're on social media too. And there's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. Don't, don't move. Bigger. Why do they always have to go bigger?